Welcome to Whiskey and RPGs. My name is Solomon SK, and thank you for tuning in for another episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. We got a lot of news to cover, so if you guys got your cups or glasses ready with your beverage of choice, let's cover the news together. Cheers to you guys. So, uh, not really news in a traditional sense, but still pretty funny and worth covering, in my opinion. Uh, we head on over to PCGamer.com. Uh, this guy built a large bridge to nowhere so he could pee his name in the snow in Death Stranding. <laughs> so, obviously they have the video here. I could probably put it on top of where I usually put the trailers, but I mean, I'm more than confident that it would fall under fair use. But just in case it doesn't, I will show you the end result via screenshot. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm very tempted to make this the thumbnail, but uh, I'll suppose how, how that goes. So apparently we got a lot of anniversaries going on right now. Last time we covered the 15th anniversary for Guild Wars 1. There's also the World of Tank anniversary, their 10th one. Uh, even, even though officially that's not until uh, August, I believe. They've already started rolling out all the goodies uh, this week, so... This time around we head on over to MMORPG.com. Lord of the Rings Online celebrates 13th anniversary with Anniversary Festival. The event is set to run through May 23rd. Both premium and VIP folks will be able to receive gifts depending on the status of your account. Specifically for VIP players, if you log on during the event, you can receive a account-wide anniversary celebration pig cosmetic pet. Rewards will be dual depending on your time with the game. For example, if you're a one-year premium or VIP member, you'll receive a one-year character portrait flame as well as anniversary fireworks however if you've been playing the game for the 13 years it's been released you're eligible to receive a 13 year character portrait frame mysterious celebration pig cosmetic pet as well as a title baker's dozen and as always you could go to lotro.com they got the different character portraits as well next we head on over to gematsu.com and uh this one's really cool. Comical sci-fi action RPG minimal effect announced for consoles and PC. And as you can see here, and I got the trailer playing above me, uh, it looks very similar to Mass Effect. And that's because it is. This is a parody or a satirical uh, version of the game. It says, in space, no one can spell your name. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but... Uh, it reads on, publisher sold out and developer Toadman Studios have announced comical science fiction action RPG minimal effect. It will launch for most major consoles and PC in 2021. More platform details will be revealed at a later date. While the story is ridiculous, the gameplay certainly is not. This is a fully fledged action RPG created in the art style of adult M animation you know and love. It's a galactic or super galactic tale of space adventure comedy and questionable morality. I, I, I'm looking forward to this one. As a huge uh, Mass Effect fan uh, and having somebody make like a comical spin of it. Uh, I mean, obviously you have Captain Shepard there. Uh, you have a Krogan there. I don't know what this is. It looks like a horse. Like you see right here, it looks like a, the nostrils and the protruding of the horse mouth. I mean, is that supposed to be Tali? Is Tali supposed to be a horse in this game? <laughs> so, yeah, this one lo looks really cool. I can't wait. Next, we head on over to altchart.com. Blue Protocol is experiencing some growing pains on the road to CBT. And I do apologize, it's cut out from the right there. But it does go on to say, Blue Protocol's highly anticipated closed beta test had run into some unforeseen issues. And the game's management team has shared an announcement that the start of the test would be delayed. The issues have now been resolved. The delay is due to a problem that seems to have occurred during preparations for the closed beta test that was supposed to start at 1900 on Thursday, 23rd of April or 7 p.m. in other words. But now it goes on to say, as per the previous announcement, Blue Protocol's closed beta test will officially go live on 23rd of April, 2020. As previously confirmed, the testing will be available for 72 hours or three days. This means the beta will end on the 26th of April, 2020. Now we head on over to massivelyop.com. Shadow Arena launches into early access on May 21st. Uh, once the 21st does roll around though, the game will be available on Steam as a free-to-play title for everyone to enjoy. 
There's even a early access trailer available just below if you like to get hyped up for the game now. You can also wishlist the game on Steam to get reminded on when to download it. There was a game I covered I believe yesterday or the day before where you actually got goodies for just having a game on your wishlist. You never know, maybe Pearl Abyss will announce that you'll get free goodies just for having this game on your wishlist as well. Well, it's all speculation. I'm going to pronounce it Ella Chai. It could be pronounced Ella Kai too, but I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm not a huge Star Trek fan, so I do apologize. Uh, but I'm going to call it Ella Chai Alert uh, event live now in Star Trek Online. The event is set to run uh, April 27th. The Ella Chai are invading the Alpha Quadrant and kidnapping people. It's up to you to stop them. And just a reminder, there is a three week long double XP event that is set to run from April 24th through May 15th as well. Back over to MassivelyOP.com, Torchlight 3 showcases the potential of forts in the video, patches in party, crash fixes, and more skill updates. So in this video, Torchlight 3 is continuing to tout the fact that players can build forts. As for the game itself, it's received another patch that has addressed a crash that players have been experiencing when parties level. The update also added some more skill updates with particular attention paid to the Railmaster as well as a number of other bug fixes. Okay, so I've said a hundred times that I'm a backer of Star Citizen. I'm really looking forward to this game, but admittedly I went through this article and there's a bunch of tech jargon in there that I have no idea what they're talking about. I do apologize for that. I, I typically like to know what I'm talking about before I share it with you guys, but in this case, for the sake of time, I'll learn what it is later on uh, just in case if there are other star citizen fans out there but heading on back over to mmorpg.com star citizen ama looks at quantum system i read this and i thought well, i mean what's so special about space travel you just go from point a to point b like really fast but i was completely wrong it has nothing to do with travel um it goes on to read the ama featured senior technical designer jake mm mule mule oh man i'm butchering that i'm so sorry uh, and more uh, here's what we learned if you are unfamiliar with the quantum it's described as the quote behind the scenes system that will allow star citizen devs to create and manage a realistic and dynamic universe through in-world actions by npcs now that sounds super fancy but i still don't know what that entails or how they do it i probably should watch the rest of the video but they go on to say server meshing and iCache will definitely help this process, but our tech requirements are more on being able to read and write to other existing services already like shopping services, the probability volume service, and a new dynamic mission service. Additionally, Quantum looks like it will be utilized to create missions depending on aggregate functions of Quanta. I mean, it sounds pretty amazing. I mean, I'll probably scroll down to the you know comment section here and see, uh, oh, look at that. Somebody called it this in investment simulator. It looks great. That's actually pretty clever. They are already ambitious as it already is. And for them to develop new ways to make the game more immersive, by all means, let's do it. Heading on over to PCGamer.com, Fallout 76 might get pets. Earlier today in a Reddit AMA with Fallout 76, the developer said, now that we have our companion system in the game, we are looking to add pets as well. They've also said that we can expect new NPCs, storylines, and companions to come out to Fallout 76 in the future. Somebody asked, will we see story DLC in the future around the Enclave and or the Brotherhood of Steel? And they've answered, let's just say the Brotherhood is now watching the wasteland of West Virginia very closely and heading on over to Destructoid.com. For the King is a co-op tabletop RPG and it's free on the Epic Game Store. Just wanted to let you know that that's the case if this is something you might be interested in. The Epic Game Store is giving out PC copies of For the King until April 30th, 2020 at 8 a.m. Pacific. Next, we head on back to MMORPG.com. Legends of Aria patch 9.5 focuses on seasons, chaos zones, and arc quest. Patch notes for update 9.5 of Legends of Aria focuses on Seasons, Chaos Zones, and Arc Quest. Here are the details. Seasons are meant to provide a new PvE and PvP challenges for players plus rewards. Chaos Zones are described as hotspots for players to take part in PvP battles. And Arc Quest are designed to showcase more of the lore and feature multi-stage quests plus rare loot. 
You know, I've covered Lineage 2 multiple times, but I still have not learned how to pronounce... Well, <laughs> you'll see. Heading on back over to MassivelyOP.com, Lineage 2 launches the Dawn of Heroes update with your own ready-made hum, Hamunsuli. Hamunsuli. I'm just going to call it Hamu for just the sake of this article. <laughs> the latest update for Lineage 2 has arrived and it brings with it the option to make your own Hamu to tag along beside you. The update also brings in Imperial Tomb as a new limited time hunting zone, adds the new War Torn Plains hunting zone, and adjusts several facets of existing hunting zones along the way. Sticking with MassivelyOP.com, Dungeons and Dragons Online discovers Update 46, The Lost Gatekeepers. Update 46, The Lost Gatekeepers arrives today to add a new quest hub and a dungeon selection. The Gatekeepers have established a new grove outside Stormreach, and initiates have gone missing, so it's your job to help rescue these would-be guardians of Eber Eberon. I'm probably saying that wrong, I apologize. Heading back over to MMORPG.com, Albion Online Guild Season 9 begins May 16th. And just really quick, the team shared several important dates pertaining to the season. Uh, as you can see here, there's a list of all the major dates that will be important. First one being May 16th, 2020 on Saturday, season nine starts with Invasion Day number one all the way to August 10th, 2020, which is a Monday, which season ends at 9.59 UTC. Lastly, keep in mind all the ownership of territories will be reset, but not to worry as you'll be able to have opportunities to claim some territory on May 16th and 17th by defeating Guardian bosses. Uh, and just to let you know, these bosses are... Uh, meant for a group of five people and I know I know I get it this isn't an RPG nor is it an MMO but I really like this franchise and I'm just gonna include it in here at the last section really quick Doraemon story of seasons for PS4 coming west on September 4th Bandai Namco released the PlayStation 4 version of Doraemon Story of Seasons in North America and Europe on September 4th the publisher announced Doraemon Story of Seasons first launch for Switch in June 2019 in Japan, followed by Switch and PC via Steam Worldwide in October 2019. If you guys didn't know, uh, I like building uh, miniatures, crafts, Gundams, Gunpla rather, uh, and uh, dioramas too. And yeah, this is what I built for my cousin. And yeah, it's, it's supposed to be uh, Nobita's room. And that concludes today's episode of MMO and RPG News Roundup. I do appreciate if you made it with me so far. The watch time does help with the algorithms. I hope everybody stays safe out there. Please continue to hold down the fort. Have a blessed night, and I'll see you guys next time. Cheers again, everyone.